Hi, and welcome to the Crit Hit Wild podcast, where we cover all things Marvel Crisis Protocol, and we do a new character every week. This week, we're going to be talking about Mephisto, and I'm your host, Fred. I'm Brad. And I'm Steven. Hey, guys. Uh, we are without Brandon again. I'm going to uh, have a lot to ask him as far as what he's grading these people when he does finally show back up. But uh, we're here today, and we're here to talk about... Uh, a an interesting character but before we do that let's talk about uh the upcoming tournaments that are coming up uh so on november the 16th there is a tournament at lost legion games and comics that is in south charleston west virginia and that is our local that is the local game store of myself and brad uh come on down if you are interested or in the area we always need more people I think that this one has seven people signed up for it, which is more than we normally get. So that's that's a pretty good showing. So uh, coming up on the 23rd of November, there is a tournament at Fabricators Forge. No. This is... Oh, wait, what? The 30th. Oh, I'm sorry, the 30th. Oh, I've got it on the wrong date. I'm pretty sure. I'll double check that. I thought the 30th was... Um, no, it's only recess seven. games. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's recess games. I thought... Okay, well, uh, I'm incorrect, I guess. But uh, on the 30th, there is a tournament at Recess Games in North Olmsted, Ohio. I know that one uh, is correct. But uh, Brad will be back to us on the date for when uh, the Fabricators Forge tournament is. Yeah, you're that, right. that... It's the 23rd. Oh boy. Okay. So <laughs> you're right. I'm right. sorry. I thought it was after Thanksgiving. It is before Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right. Well, on the 23rd, there is a so tournament sorry. at Fabricators Forge. Uh, that one is in Northern Pittsburgh. Uh, it is run by Bryce, and this one will be a an affiliation tournament. So head on that way if you are interested in playing that kind of game. That means that you have to be fully affiliated. Your roster. Which is interesting. I kind of like that as a way of playing the game. Uh, and so that's it for the month of November. Uh, then looking further in the future, in January, uh, on January the 18th, there is the next BECC uh, event that is going to be at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston. And there will be only be one additional BECC after that. So come on down. We need all the people we can get. Let's get this thing figured out and and find out who is going to be attending the BECC finals. All right. Uh there is no news out of AMG, nothing at all, and they have given us the the tweet that they say they will see us in January. So we will not be having any more news this year unfortunately. But which means uh, also that we are at the time of the year where uh, we need requests. We have like two or three, and then we're going to run out. So if there's any characters you would like us to talk about that we have not talked about on the show, uh, request it in the YouTube comments or send an email to crithitwild at gmail.com but I don't remember if it has dashes uh oh <laughs> okay well uh, when you find that out uh, hop back in and, and let the people know it does uh, not but have yeah, dashes we... it's just crithitwild all one word okay alright crithitwild at gmail.com uh, thank you Brad uh, let's move on to games that we played recently so I don't have any games we play that I've played recently I have not played since last week I I was just too worn out on Thursday, our normal game night, to get in at any games. Uh, Brad, do you have any games that you want to talk about? Uh, I didn't flake out on Thursday, and I showed up <laughs> and played. And I played Borka, and he played... Shoot, what was he playing? Um, was he playing uh, Cabal? He played Cabal against uh, Brandon last night, but he oh, was okay. not playing Cabal against me. He played, it might have been Wakanda? 
Oh, that's very possible. He's been toying around with Wakanda like lists. That's not right either. It was Wakanda. Because re- it was M'Baku, Panther, Black Panther, regular Black Panther, uh, Shuri, and Shang-Chi. I think that's his. Oh, of course. Voice. And I played Apocalypse. Uh, it was 18 points, which is the sweet spot for Apocalypse. So I play Apocalypse. Uh, Colossus, Wolverine, and Psylocke. It was Gamma and Montesi. And he... uh, Wolverine and Colossus did so much work in this game. And at one point he had... I think everyone on the table was flipped at this point. Uh, he had a Shuri and M'Baku left, and I had a just flipped Apocalypse, a Colossus, and a Psylocke. And so I felt, and I was ahead on points, I think. So I felt pretty good. Uh, M'Baku activated, and I was like, and he started attacking Apocalypse. And I was thinking, even if he takes out Apocalypse, Psylocke will finish him off. Um, and then Colossus could finish off Shuri and I get the I just wipe him off the board uh, M'Baku killed uh, Apocalypse and then went ahead and killed Psylocke while he was there oh boy and then oh boy. Colossus, way to go M'Baku <laughs> Colossus killed uh, Shuri and so we each had one model left and he was ahead on points now because we were on each other's gamma. And so he uh, he had to have been ahead of points before. But I was I was felt like I was up on attrition. And he went first and he like threw a piece of train so I couldn't throw it at him and moved away. And all I could do was double move and throw a piece of train at him and hope it was enough. And it wasn't. He blocked it. Oh, and, boy. And then the game ended. It was turn six that we played the game. We played the game till turn six. So That sounds like a a, a slog, like a, a complete slog of a game. Uh, it kind of was. I Attrition games go that way. Yeah, I played... Um, uh, fastball special, and it was really great. Uh, yeah, I, I want to. How are you feeling about Wolverine? You, I mean, I know that I, you're liking him, but I am liking him a lot in Apocalypse. Wolverine plus Colossus is a uh, fantastic combination. It is. It is. Uh, I like it. Uh, throwing stuff at Shang Chi is the way to take him out, unless you have like just long range attacks but I don't have a lot of those so I threw Wolverine at him I threw Terrain at him I took him out pretty quickly actually it was nice alright then okay uh, Steven do you have any games that you've played that you would like to speak about Uh, no not at the moment but I do have a game that I will reference a couple of weeks ago because I actually played against a proxy Mephisto. Ooh, okay. So we can we can move on. Okay. And we'll okay. Get to get to it then. All right. That 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 is fair. Uh, well, I mean, I unless either of you have any other games you want to talk about, I think we can move on to our next segment, uh, which will be trivia. Hey, Brad. I'm I'm really doing poorly here on trivia. Is this one gonna kick my ass? Uh, I've hopefully not. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> it's it's a fine line, Fred, because it has to not be easy, uh, uh, right? And, and but has, also there are <laughs> it could be incredibly difficult. Uh, and it also has to be fun for our home viewers. Uh, part of that fun is watching you struggle or listening to you struggle. Uh, <laughs> but part of that fun is also like trying to guess along. 
And uh, so I picked some pretty famous stuff. Okay. All right. This time. So hopefully, hopefully you get some points. So here's how the points work. Uh, <laughs> Fred gets three points if he gets it right with the first clue. Uh, then I'll give him a hint. If he gets it right, then he gets two points. And then he can throw it to Steven for help to get one point. And he needs six points to win. Uh, Steven, do you have any questions? No, sir, I do not. Okay, great. After years of Marvel trying to end Spider-Man and Mary Jane's marriage, they used this character to finally end it. Just oh, they use this character to finally end it. Yep, to end uh, their marriage. How the I the how does does Mary Jane get killed? Or oh boy, I I know uh, nothing no. about this. This is I'll answer that question for you, Fred, to make it a little easier. She does not get killed. Okay, okay. Is it um, is it Black Cat? Uh, that is incorrect. Okay. Your hint. This character formed a group to try to take the Beyonder's godlike powers to gain favor with death. The character death. This character is not Thanos. I was just about to say Thanos. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, is, is. Made for, uh, trying to make when, what are the Beyonders? I've never even heard of that. Okay, There's so, so many so, factions in this hey, world. No, no, no. I mean, yes, that is a faction, but that came much later. Originally, in this story, the Beyonder is a single character that comes from beyond our universe who is godlike, and oh, he takes okay. he takes a, a bunch of superheroes and supervillains. And he puts them on this thing called Battle World and makes them fight. It's the first Secret War series. It is. Oh boy! And I this, have no idea. This was also in the. Well, this fact wasn't, but Battle World and the Beyonder and all that stuff was in the first, not the first, in the '90s uh, Spider-Man TV series. Uh, well, this is me having zero clue. It could be anyone that is in the game right now in my head. So I'm going to just say Rhino. Uh, it is not Rhino. Steven, okay. can you help him out? I think I can, but I'm not sure I can. Uh, is it our illustrious guest that we're doing today? Mr. Mephisto. It is. Oh, well, poop. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> one of the most notorious storylines that even non-comics readers have heard about is called Brand New Day where and I have definitely talked to you about it before Fred uh, where Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto to bring back Aunt May and as part of that deal he never uh, dates or marries or has a kid with Mary Jane you're right. We have talked about that before. Uh, I forgot about that entirely. <laughs> so I was kind of hoping that that one would be a little easier for you. Uh oh. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> no. All right. So one point for Fred. Thanks to Steven. You just got to get five more points, Fred, which means okay. you got to get these next ones on your own. Uh huh. This character once hired a group of mercs, including Gwynpool and Batrock the Leaper, creating a new mercenary organization designed only for killing. Gwynpool ends up betraying this character and taking over as leader of the merc group. Um, is it Modoc? This character once had memories of having a <laughs> wife and kid that he's never had in the comics. This was actually memories from his TV appearance. Is it Modoc? <laughs> it is Modoc. That's three points uh, for Fred. Uh, so I vaguely remember that Gwynpool once 
was working for and then overthrew Modoc in the organization. I, I vaguely remember I, that. I don't also, know why. Uh, Fred slipped in the name of the organization. Mercenary yes, that helped. organization designed only for killing. Uh huh. Which spe- spells Modoc. <laughs> it does spell Modoc, and that was the name of the organization in the comic. But <laughs> I'm glad that you remembered it. So you're up to four points. Okay. You okay. I'm not out of this more. yet. You can do this one, Fred. This character steals a part of the dead Professor X's brain, gaining his powers. Magneto eventually kills this character to stop him from changing the world in his image, and the other characters at the scene of the fight look at Magneto like he's the bad guy, even though he is absolutely in the right. Oh, jeez. Um... Okay, I stole a piece of the dead Professor X's brain, and then Magneto kills him. That is what uh, I just said. I'm yeah. I'm trying to. Th- I'm thinking. I'm thinking I, out loud here, so I that I'm not are. leaving dead here. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, is this? It's got to be a. I w- I'm assuming that it's a mutant because everything about this is surrounded by mutant stuff. Uh. But that's not necessarily true. I'm going to guess that it is Cyclops. That is incorrect. Okay. Your hint. This character disguised himself and infiltrated the U.S. government and became the Secretary of Defense, Del Rusk, to develop a biological weapon. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, someone who's good at disguising themselves. Who would be good at disguising themselves? Who is also a mutant? Is it? And but I was about to say Mystique, but you've said he. You've said he. I did say he. You've said he. I was gonna say Mystique. Um. Th- I know that Mystique is somebody's father. That is also true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, Mystique does use female pronouns, though. Okay, okay, okay. All all right, well, then in that case, I'm going to say Logan is not exactly a person who's good at infiltrating stuff, like through subterfuge and becoming the Secretary of Defense. Somebody who's smart... Beast can't really change himself. He's too blue to be to become the Secretary of Defense. And oh gosh, who are other mutants that are in this game that could be the person? There's someone screaming it out at their uh at their thing right now and I'm just completely without the ability to do this. I'm going to just guess Nightcrawler and that's wrong cuz he's blue. That is incorrect. Steven, do you okay. know who this is? Um, well, since you said Magneto, I would have to go with... I think it, I think it's Red Skull. It is Red Skull. It's Red Skull? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, do you know the significance of the name Del Rusk? It's a anagram of Red Skull. It is. It is. Poop. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, when you were like so convinced it was a mutant, I'm like, there's no way Fred's going to get this right. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Yeah. So he, he uh, Magneto kills him, and Havoc and Scarlet Witch and I think Polaris are all there, and they're like, how could you do that? And, like, as the reader, I'm like, he was literally going to just change reality. <laughs> and he's he's a Nazi. <laughs> like, what? Okay, anyway. Uh, Fred, luckily there's a bonus question, and it is worth one point. So, since you're at five points, this is enough to win. Okay. All right, you ready for the okay. bonus question? Yes. All right. What do these characters have in common? 
it's not a shared affiliation. Okay. Uh, all right. So we've got Mephisto, Modok, and Red Skull. I got them all. I know them all. Uh, is it that I'm re? Uh, hold, I'm trying to read uh, Mephisto real quick so that I. C- is it that they can place other characters? Can Mephisto place another character? Then, uh, if you do rule. Uh, I can't. I don't know. Um, I think that it's they can pl- place other characters. That's my guess. That's the guess that I'm gonna make. I don't believe that's accurate. That is not what I have written down. But I also okay. don't think that's true. Okay. They all have reverse bodyguard, where they push. They do all have reverse bodyguard onto someone else. Okay. When this character is targeted by attack, I may use this super... Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Reverse and bodyguard. And it's on Modoc Scientist Supreme and the original Red Skull. Yep. Yep. Okay, then. Well, five out of six ain't that bad. That's you, not a that's blowout. That's way better than you have been doing. <laughs> I'd like to correct that score and say it was only three out of six, because I give him one. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> or two. Got, I gave you yeah, two. You did get two of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he did two. get two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Fred, 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 Fred. <laughs> hey, I'm not good at this game. Brandon was telling me last night that he could have helped you on two out of three of the questions from last week. So that would have given me three points instead of one? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Still, All right, you did well, way better this time, Fred. Good job. Yeah, I got one. I got one. That's you got one all on your own on the first try. Yeah. You did include the person's name in the hint. Kind of, yes. <laughs> uh, all I right. Did all that, right. Let's move but on. But I did that a second time, Fred, and you did not get it the second time. All right. right move, on, yeah. move on. Move on. Move on. Moving on. Moving on. All right. Well, uh, let's talk about the person that we're here to talk about today. Uh, that person being Mephisto, the Lord of Temptation, otherwise known as Mephisto. Uh, his defenses are three physical, four energy, and four mystic. He has seven stamina on both sides of his card. He is a threat value of five. Psy. He is a size three, and he is a medium mover. Uh, all right, Stephen, why don't you go over his attacks? Sure. Uh, first, we have Hellfire Lash. It is an energy attack. It is range of three, strength of six, and zero cost and power. After the attack is resolved, the character will gain one power. And on a wild, we have incinerate. After the attack is resolved, the target character will gain the incinerate special condition. Uh, we have next a mystic attack called Infernal Bargain. It is range two, strength of six also, zero power cost. After the attack is resolved, if damage was dealt, this character gains a devil deal token and then if the attack would deal one or more damage it deals one damage instead last we have termination clause it is an energy attack it is a beam four strength is six it will cost you five power for each devil's deal token this character has you will add one die to the attack roll for this attack and then after each attack is resolved the target character gains the incinerate special condition Okay, uh, Brad, why don't you do, uh, why don't you do the rest of the card? <laughs> Thanks. Fred. Quite a bit still. Uh, an active Devil's Do superpower costs one. Choose an enemy character within range three of this character. Spend one Devil's Deal token. If you do, roll five dice. For each wild roll, the target character loses one power, and this character gains one power. Then for each hit roll, the char- the target character suffers one damage. A character may be affected by this superpower only once per turn. Uh, Active, how can I be of service? Uh, Superpower, cost two. Choose an enemy character within range three. Place this character within one of it. Then this character makes the infernal bargain attack targeting that character. This superpower can only be used once per turn. And then... 
Uh, the next one is a reactive meet my associate superpower. It costs one. When this character is targeted by an attack, it may use this superpower. Spend one devil's deal token. If you do, choose another allied character within range three and place it within one of this model or this character. Sorry. Then the chosen character becomes the new target for the attack, regardless of range and line of sight. Uh, innate demonic contract this character may have a maximum of three devil's deal tokens at any time it begins the game with one devil's deal token during the power phase this character gains power for each devil deals token it has and it has and he has immunity incinerate and poison okay uh all right so there's a lot that we have to discuss here about this character uh Probably most importantly, there are four tactics cards, one of them being his leadership tactics card. Uh, I think that we should start there with his leadership tactics card. That is called Devil's Reckoning. Uh, it is an... I, I know that's not the first one in, in um, alphabetical order, but we should do it first because it is his affiliation tactics card. Uh, it is an unaffiliated reactive card. Uh, when it is included in your squad, if your squad is unaffiliated and includes Mephisto, Lord of Temptation, he may play this card. Your squad is now using the Legion of the Lost affiliation, regardless of other affiliated characters. Mephisto, Lord of Temptation, gains the following leadership ability. It is your active leadership. It is called Damnation uh, for Legion of the Lost. During the cleanup phase, your opponent chooses one non-dazed character they control without the incinerate special condition or immunity incinerate. Uh, the chosen character gains one power and the incinerate special condition. And then additionally, during the cleanup phase, choose two characters you control. The chosen characters gain one power. All right. So what do you guys think about this as a leadership? I think... I, it's uh, I'm I'm of two minds here. Uh, incinerate is great, and being able to just force your opponent to put it on people uh, is nice. But they also gain a power, and you don't get to choose it. Your opponent chooses it, so they could choose Wong in the back, who doesn't matter at all, or they could choose someone who you definitely are, are not. They're not the focal point of your first attack which is kind of who you you're probably hoping that they're going to put it on to and then uh the additional is just nice you get to pick two characters who gain one power that's a kind of mediocre power distribution leadership because you are you're only getting two and it's on two different characters but it is nice it's nice to get extra power so what do you guys think about this, this leadership? What do you think about this, Brad? Okay, so I think that the right way to think about this leadership is to see the extra two power as the main ability and the incinerate as an added bonus. Yeah. Uh, I also think it's very flavorful for uh, Mephisto, he is making a deal with your with your the characters on the opposing side, um, giving them a bonus and a and the, and something bad, and then you get something in return. I think that's really cool design. The leadership doesn't seem that good though. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. This is a very uh, very thematic leadership, and I love the. There are a lot of thematic things in this card. But um, he, I don't think it's very good either. Uh, Steven, what are your thoughts here? Um, unlike some other tactics cards, leadership, um, I don't think it's worth a card slot, to tell you the truth. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going down 20% for a leadership that doesn't really give you that much in return. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It, it's definitely going yeah, it, to take some workshopping and someone figuring something out with it. Like, it's not straightforward right. at all. Like the new mutants one, you know, any character can use that 
any time during the turn. And this is only during the cleanup phase at one time. So yeah. just so it just triggers one time is also also one of those things where it's just like, yeah, you know, you, you like to get more out of your leadership by activating it quite a quite a few times. So mm -hmm. Or, uh, I mean, Emma Frost is only once also, but that one does so much more. But it like, affects everybody on your team. Yeah, it affects everyone, and they heal and gain power, or they heal Emma Frost and give her power. Like, it's it's a great leadership compared to this Red, one, which is a no, very... Nobody uses the second part of Emma's leadership, trust me. Oh, I know, you're right. <laughs> but That's but it's true. still like... a outstanding leadership yeah hulk would love well, to well take, this one is bad hulk would love to take one damage and heal emma yeah there are yeah. exceptions brad thank you <laughs> yeah but, uh, but while this one is a very bad leader i think this one's not good uh steven i i know that you need to leave soon uh due to other obligations well uh, just before you leave just give a quick thought uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be right now, but just before you sign off, give us a quick thought on on Mephisto and a quick letter grade. Uh, but well, we... having played against him, um, yeah, why don't you talk about that? I think he has quite a bit of potential, um, and you, he's one of those characters that if you see him, you know you're going to have to work around him. Honestly, um, he has those tactics cards that are not his leadership that can throw a monkey wrench into the works. Um, uh, when I played against him, uh, I took my Hydra list with Scarlet Witch, and I put Scarlet Witch into him, but she was supported by uh, Baron Mordo, um, Arnim Zola, and Strucker. So, um, so adding dice to Witch with Mordo, and then um, Strucker and Zola giving rerolls, and then she counts skulls. So, um, no, he got his own with that that beam going off, but you know, which finally got him in the end. So, uh, this guy hates Ghost Rider, though. Ghost Rider will practically eat this guy alive. Yeah, because Ghost Rider, even though one of his attacks gives out Cinerate, his other attack gives out Hex, which he does not like, obviously. Mm. Um, and with which I hit him with, um, I hit him with judgment also, including the hex. So he wasn't getting power from the attacks I was putting into him. And okay. like I said, I had a plan. And then my other character I had in that roster was Bucky, who was doing his rifle, which was taking power off of him. And he wasn't getting power from the rifle attacks after he was judged. So it, it, the the plan I had going into him worked and unless people have like a focus and a dedication like that um, I think he's going to cause a lot of problems okay okay uh, did did these tactics cards that we haven't covered yet did they come into play in this game no I denied him of so much power it was oh yeah okay yeah he just never used them. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, do you want to give him a quick letter grade based off of your experience? I think people are going to jump to use him. And he's going to be one of those models that people will use him. Uh, some people will figure out. Some people won't. So I see his usage very high in the beginning. And then people will just drop off because they're like oh he doesn't work but then you'll have those few dedicated few who will figure out how he works and i don't uh think it's too far off i think his i think his one main detractor is that he has a um another source of management which are his devil deals tokens mm -hmm. and it's kind of like chasing a dragon a little bit so uh, we've had other characters who've had these mechanics, such as Mr. Sinister, uh, Hela, Punisher. Um, and these characters tend not to do well. So because people aren't aren't dedicated to to figuring out the mechanic, and sometimes the mechanic is clunky, especially in people like Sinister. 
So I'm giving him a B minus, honestly. Okay. Yeah, so. he's he's super complicated. I, I, I'll I'll give my 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 feelings after we've talked about everything. But yeah, uh, I won't be far off. Uh, okay, let's let's head back to his tactics cards. Uh, they are there are still three more of them to talk about. This guy is a tactics card heavy character. Uh, all right, let's talk about the first one here called Brand New Day. Uh, it is an unaffiliated reactive tactics card. When an enemy character would be dazed or KO'd while within range 3 of an allied Mephisto Lord of Temptation, he may play this card. The enemy character's controlling player chooses one of the following effects. The enemy character is not dazed or KO'd and removes one damage, all special conditions, and up to one activated token from itself. Additionally, Mephisto, Lord of Temptation, gains two Devil's Deal tokens and removes an activated token from an a from any allied character. Or, Mephisto, Lord of Temptation, removes all damage and special conditions from himself and gains three power. That is... Uh, Alright, I'll be frank. I think this one is awesome. I think it's, I think it's a great card. Uh, I love... One of the things I love about Mephisto are putting your opponent into situations that they hate to make the choice that they have to make. And this is this is the best one for that. It is a case where they get a character back and they they have one health left and they are no longer activated. Uh but Mephisto someone on Mephisto's side gets to remove an activated token and Mephisto gains two devil's deal tokens which is a lot of Devil's Deal tokens. Or, if they choose not to do that, Mephisto, Lord of Temptation, removes all damage and special conditions from himself and gains three power. That rules. That's such a good ability. I think uh, Brand New Day is a very good card, and it does not cost any power for Mephisto to use. Like He just has to be within range three of, of the opponent to, to do this. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this? What is your thought on this, Steven? Um, I don't know. It's uh, It wasn't played against me, so... Um, I think... Uh, I think you just let your character go by the wayside. I so. mean, th if you do that, Mephisto heals all damage and r gains three power. I understand that. Yeah, that it's it's a really like I love this card for because it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't question but that it, you're putting for your opponent. But I'd rather have him with the power on instead of activating twice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's uh, uh, it's I love it. I love this card. Uh, Brad, what are your thoughts here? Uh, I like this card. I think it is pretty good. The fact that it doesn't cost anything is the best feature. Uh, mm -hmm. it's really funny if you kill them on their activation. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they can save their character during its own activation, uh, but the activated token won't come off because they don't have an activated token. And then you get your two tokens, and you get to take an activated token off. So they probably won't pick that. They'll probably choose to die on their own turn. Which sucks, mm -hmm. yeah. But that it's very funny if you can pull that off. Yeah, I I think this is a great card. I'm really if I'm playing Mephisto ever, I probably am playing this card along with him. All right, uh, let's talk about the next one of his tactics card. It's called Embrace the Inferno. It is an unaffiliated reactive tactics card. During the power phase, an allied Mephisto Lord of Temptation may spend four power to play this card. All other characters within range three of Mephisto Lord of Temptation gain the Incinerate Special Condition. This round, when an allied character with the Incinerate Special Condition is attacking, it may reroll all of its attack dice. If it does, and the attack deals damage, it removes the Incinerated Condition after the attack is resolved. Okay. Where the last one was really, really cool, and I really liked it, this one is a lot less cool, and I like it a lot less. Uh, what are your thoughts here on this one, Steven? 
Um, this is the one that's a fun Z card for casual night, but otherwise you won't see it. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Brad, what are your thoughts here? I think it'd be a lot better if it was cheaper. I think that's yeah, the big four thing. power. Because like, you can probably remove incinerate from your people pretty easily. And you could even build a list where some of them were immune in the first place. Well, I don't know you. Well, that, what's the point of the card? Yeah, then, then you uh, you really want to reroll the dice to give out incinerate on your opponents. Yeah. Oh, this no. is reroll all by the way, not a nanny. Right. It's oh, all. Oh yeah. You, this. No, it's even worse. This is bad. Yeah, this is a bad card. It's bad. Uh, yeah, reroll all attack dice. Uh, now, the, the the only person I can see this being any good on is um, people like Scarlet Witch, who counts her skulls anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah. then because she can't reroll the skulls, and then maybe Doctor Strange because he can reroll all his skulls, and he can do it twice because he has the Eye of Agamotto. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I I think this is a this is a bad card. This one just doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. It, it's it's making a deal with your own characters that they catch fire until they do damage and they get an extra uh, chance to do damage, but it's still just not. It, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's that good of a card. All right, uh, and then the last tactics card for Mephisto is, believe it or not, the wordiest one. Uh, it is called Up the Ante. It is an unaffiliated reactive tactics card. When another allied character would deal damage to an enemy character with an attack, an allied Mephisto Lord of Temptation may play this card. The enemy character's controlling player chooses one of the following effects. The attack does not deal damage, and the enemy character loses that much power instead. For the remainder of the game, Mephisto Lord of Temptation may have up to five Devil's Deal tokens instead of the normal three. Then Mephisto Lord of Temptation gains two Devil's Deal tokens. After the attack is or the other option is, after the attack is resolved, Mephisto Lord of Temptation may remove an activated token from himself. If he does not, return this card to your active team tactics card instead of discarding it, and this card may be played again this game. So this one is similar to the first one, Brand New Day. It's just not as good. Um, I think it's better, to, Fred. You think it's better? Yeah. Being able to, uh, it's easier to trigger because it's whenever someone would deal damage as opposed to when they are dazed. But um, they, yeah. mm, you keep you keep repeating it. You just play it every single time that you deal damage. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you. Okay. All right. You know, there. It, this one is actually it's quite good. Well, uh. I wouldn't play it unless I've activated Mephisto first. Right, but still, I mean, it's one of those things where you just keep saying, hey, you want to? Hey, you want to? <laughs> well, I also think Mephisto is an early activation. He's probably your first activation every round. Unless you have some real kaiju in your list. But yeah, I uh, so you use him... And then on your second activation, if Mephisto isn't dazed, then you can use this card and bait your opponent into unactivating un uh, Mephisto. Mm -hmm. I, think... I don't know. Uh, I, I still feel like this card is not, not as good as the other one, as Brand New Day. And the reason being is that the stakes aren't as high. It's not as tough of a choice, I feel like. That being said, being able to hold five Devil's Deal tokens means that you could be gaining six power every turn at the be right. at the power phase. No, the one thing I like on him is that last, uh, last little phrase on him. It says, during the power phase, this character gains one power for each Devil's Deal token. Mm -hmm. So unlike um, as Guardians or... Um, that say they gain one additional power. This is an each, so stuns don't really affect him when he's gaining oh. power during the power phase. Hmm. So stun would not affect that amount of power generation? If you're getting it for each one. 
it's not additional like the Asgardians. Oh, because each one would be a case, a separate case of gaining a Correct. power. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> that is that is something to think about. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Brad, I haven't let you talk about this card. What are your thoughts here on know. this card? I'm torn. I, I think you're it's torn? good. I think if you're playing Mephisto and you want to center him, you take both the free cards. Yeah, I both, I agree. I think they'll both it's... come up. They'll both be good when you play them. Yeah, uh, I I agree with you that it's good. And if you're playing Mephisto, you're probably playing in both of them. I still think that Brand New Day is a more interesting thing to force your opponent to choose. <laughs> but yes, this one is definitely also one. All right, uh, Stephen, I know you have to head off. I'll uh. I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Take care, guys. Have fun, everybody out there. Bye, Steven. Bye. All right. So now it's just Brad and I, everyone. Uh, I let's head back to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's head back to, his, uh, to the character himself. I think that he is very interesting. He is a, only a five threat... And he definitely does not have the table presence that I was expecting this character to have. Mm. You know, for ha for being the devil. And a devil. is he on a a devil? You're right. Uh, is he on a, lar a the largest base size? I don't think so. I think he's on medium. I don't. He's know on a sure, medium though. base. Okay, we're not sure what base size he's on. Honestly, um, I kind of feel like he's a little underwhelming. Uh, his termination clause uh, has the potential to be one of the most devastating attacks in the game if he has five Devil's Deal tokens. Yeah, it's really good and, if he has five. Uh, but how often is he going to have five? Um, I think very infrequently. Okay, I don't think he's going to have to activate him twice. Well, that's true. If you get to activate him twice, he can really build him up. No, I mean, then he did get to... That card is, he either activates a second time or you give him five tokens. Both, oh, you're right. Both of those you options could, are good. Brand New Day could also let him activate twice. Oh, In a, yeah, in a yeah, round. Yeah. Uh, but but um, I feel like he... I this He's kind of a glass cannon. Um, I, he can shunt off attacks onto other people that's that's his defense which is that, a great yeah. defensive that is a very good defense uh defensive tech but there are ways around it that are pretty easy <laughs> like if you just isolate him if you push him away from everyone around him uh it has to be outside suddenly of three. yeah that's not that hard to get i feel like you could just throw him like if if you have someone he's only size three, there are a lot a lizard could throw this guy away from everyone else on his team. And then I bet Lizard does him substan substantial damage. I like, I think you try to keep this guy from getting devil's deal tokens. If you're playing against him? Yeah. Yeah. I so I I believe the only way he can get them is with his range two attack, right? Uh, uh, that or the cards. Right. Yeah. So I think you, if you can keep them off of him, and he spends the one he starts the game with, he doesn't really do much once he doesn't have tokens. He just has a range three six die attack, energy attack. He gives out incinerate. Yeah. That's a gainer, not a builder. It is a gainer, yeah. And he doesn't have yeah. anything to use that power on except uh, the how can I be of service if he doesn't have any Devil's Deal tokens. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going to do the how can I be of service if he doesn't have any tokens, but then you're only taking one damage. So like, if you can make it hard for him to get tokens, I think he's kind of a lame duck 
Right. Now, uh, how can I be of service is an extra, it's an extra attack. It does oh, not cost you an action. Yeah. So he will probably be making an infernal bargain every single turn of the game. Not if, if you run if away you, from him. Uh, I mean, he, do you just want to give your opponent the, the entire battlefield? I mean, the range three, that's, that's a big range for how can I be of service. And it depends on the scenario. Like, it might not be that hard. I'm just saying, if you can manufacture it, it's great. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If you can keep away from Mephisto, he's not going to do much. But I feel like that's tricky. Uh, but that being said, I feel like Mephisto... I will be frank. I feel like this guy, he's a glass cannon. I think that he's... Uh, his infernal... Uh, his Devil's Deal tokens is an interesting uh, mechanic. I don't think it works very well. Now, I've never played it. And I've never played against it, so I can't really speak from experience. But my gut is telling me that this is going to be... You have to set up Rube Goldberg machines uh, on uh, uh, in order to create situations where he's going to be able to use his Devil's Deal tokens in the best way possible. And, or, and gain them in the best way possible. I, I just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying this, and then there's going to be a game where he uses Termination Clause two times in a round and annihilates my entire team. Because it can, even without the, the five, if he only has three uh, Devil's Deal tokens, that is a nine-die attack that causes auto-incinerate on everyone under a beam four. That is an amazing attack. Yeah, so that is an incredible power. I I think he's going to have lots of power. He gains a power every Devil's Deal token that he gets. And then he you can if you're under his leadership, he could just gain an extra power every turn as well. So, that if you if he's sitting on let's say he's sitting on 3 Devil's Deal tokens and he chooses himself during the cleanup phase if you're playing under his leadership, he start he gets five power during the power phase that's a lot and and Fred, then is this one of those times where you're like hyping the character up and i'm dogging the character and then we gave him the same grade probably because i'm uh, i'll be frank i i'm not gonna give this guy a very high grade i don't <laughs> think he's why are you good. defending him <laughs> but, uh, because it needs to be said uh, this is a uh, a, a thing where he's th these are things that can occur I don't know uh, they're just unlikely I think he's not very good that's what I'll say uh, do, are you ready to give this guy a letter grade sure I want to hear yours first though okay my my letter I'm going to give him a C just a straight C I'm, I am kind of down on this character I think he's not as good as he should be I think that I, I love the idea of making your opponent make difficult decisions. Uh, I love that that's his mechanic. I think it doesn't quite work all that well. I, I think that because uh, one of my favorite cards in the game is is Modoc's card where you force your opponent to choose one of the two stacks that you place in front of them. I love that. I love making your opponent make rough choices. This one is less random. Like, it, you can't... Th there's less you can do to manipulate it. You can't just put a damage into both of them if they have one health left and guarantee that they go down. This is a case where every choice your opponent knows exactly the stakes. And so it's a little less fun. I also feel like this character just doesn't work the way that he's supposed to. He's, he's probably a watered-down version of the original concept. Most likely because the original concept would have been game-breakingly powerful. I guess that I have spoken enough. What are your thoughts here on this guy, Brad? Uh, one thing we haven't talked about very much is Devil's Do, which I absolutely love. I think it's so good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I will give him a B-, and I bet if Brandon was here, he would give it the highest grade today. Really? Uh -huh. Okay. 
That's just a gut feeling. I'm not okay. talking to Brandon okay. about Mephisto. I just have this gut feeling that Brandon will like this guy. Uh, I, I let, you're right. We haven't spoken enough about Devil's Do. I want to say it again. Uh, choose an enemy character within range three of this character. Spend one Devil's Deal token. If you do, roll five dice for each wild roll. The target character loses one power, and this character gains one power. Then for each damage rolled, the target character suffers one damage. A character may be aff affected by this superpower only once per round. Uh, I I do really like that. That is fun. It's you're gonna probably do some damage if you steal power from them it happens before you deal the damage so you can yeah. be sure to get the power out it is a cool effect i do uh, like and it only costs one power but it costs a devil steel token these i like these types of superpowers and this is the first one where you actually get the power Yes, yeah. yeah all you, the you're other stealing ones, their you're, power away from them. You strip it, but you don't get it. You don't get that power. He gets the power, which I think is really cool because it can get you to some things on his card that you wouldn't normally be able to get to. Yeah. Okay, uh, that is our take on Mephisto. Uh, I'm pretty down on him, I think. Uh, I I am skeptical that he will have a huge impact on the meta. I could be wrong. I'm wrong about a lot of stuff, so, so it's very stuff. possible. <laughs> All right. Well, Brad, do you have any comic books that feature Mephisto? I sure oh, uh, do. Before you before you do before you do, uh, I need to get in the habit of doing this. Uh, I want to say what affiliations Mephisto is in. Mephisto is in Cabal, Criminal Syndicate, and Legion of the Lost. Those those are uh, Legion of the Lost being his specific leadership. Uh, Criminal Syndicate. <laughs> I, I I just find that funny that you have this character who is the devil who is working for Kingpin. Hi, I mean I'm Kingpin. In, I have the devil working under me. In the game, that's true. <laughs> that he he works for Kingpin, but in the comics, it's the other way. So yeah. Red Skull not Red Skull, uh, Hood. <laughs> I don't know why I said Red Skull. Hood unknowingly is working for Mephisto, and Hood is in charge of a criminal empire. Okay. So I think All that's right. the connection they went with. But yeah, That's fair. Okay, I cut you off. Go. Uh, do you have any comic books that feature Mephisto? Uh, I do. I have three stories today. So... The first is Silver Surfer Judgment Day. And I know Fred does not know this, and some of our listeners probably don't either, but Mephisto was originally mostly a Silver Surfer villain. Okay, I definitely did not know that. Also, the Silver Surfer is the weirdest hero in the in the entire Marvel Universe, I think. Uh, and it's he's just a dude who rides a surfboard around space. Yes, and it's also kind of weird that hit, one of his villains is the devil. Um, <laughs> but this is a little bit later than that. Um, he still obviously has connections to Silver Surfer, but this is by Stan Lee and John Bashima, and this is Silver Surfer versus Mephisto and Mephisto versus Galactus. That sounds like fun, right? Oh, boy. And okay. Mephisto is offering Silver Surfer everything he could ever want. His long-lost dead love, his freedom from Galactus, all sorts of stuff. And uh, all he wants in return is Silver Surfer's soul. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, Quite the steep charge. Maybe, maybe not. All right, the next one. Uh, I'm going to actually save that one to last. So the the next one that I'm going to do is Doctor Strange Damnation. This is by Donny Cates and Rod Reese. Uh, so I don't know if you know this, Fred, but the Nazis, a.k.a. Hydra, took over America 
because of Captain America, and we're running the country for a little bit. Hmm. Okay, I did not know that. Uh, well, they're eventually stopped by Captain America. It's confusing. Don't worry about it. There's two of them. Okay. One of them's a Nazi. Uh, but Doctor Strange helps save Las Vegas from the Nazis. But in doing so, he accidentally opens up a portal and lets Mephisto take control of Las Vegas. And so... Sin City. Uh, more now than ever. <laughs> and so Wong recruits a group of uh, heroes calling themselves the Midnight Suns, including Scarlet Spider, who apparently should be in the affiliation in the game, and mm -hmm. uh, and takes him on and tries to stop Mephisto. Okay. Uh, uh, they do fight an army of Ghost Riders. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> this this comic is um on the humorous side. It's uh it's not okay. it does not take itself seriously. Well, that's good. Uh and then the third recommendation, the best that I'm going to give you today is Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom Triumph and Torment. This is by Roger Stern and Mike Magnola. Do you know who that is, Fred the artist Mike Magnola? Uh, you've mentioned him before. I recognize the name, but I don't know what he do he has done. He, Did he do House of X, Powers of Ten? No. This oh, is okay. the creator of Hellboy. Oh, okay. And is a very good artist, so the art in this comic is great. The story is okay. also really good. So Mephisto has the soul of Doctor Doom's mom. And he doesn't like that. So he recruits Doctor Strange to go take on Mephisto and free his mom. Okay. Uh, Way to go, Doctor Doom. It's, doc being... it's Doctor Doom versus the devil. It's, uh, it's a good story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, fun times. All right. Well, uh, thank you for those recommendations, Brad. Uh, Brad, do you have an idea of what affiliation would be good with Mephisto? I don't have anyone else to ask. Um, I, mean, I had we not given this. this I had not given this any thought at <laughs> all. But uh, I, 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 I do have a thought. I have a thought. I, I, I have one, but it's affiliated. You should play him with Modok to the leader uh, so that you can play the Modok card and all the Mephisto cards. Okay. And, okay. And make your opponent make bad choices all the time. My thought was my Hellfire Club uh, because my Hellfire Club needs lots of tactics cards and Mephisto brings a bunch, but also it kind of fits, right? <laughs> It would make yeah. sense that they would have Mephisto working for my Hellfire Club. Uh, there is no connection between him and the Hellfire Club, as far as I know. <laughs> and I well, that think makes sense. I would know. Well, there's a connection. So Mephisto has a son named Blackheart, and Blackheart was a member of the Hellfire Club and was condemned to live in their basement by a hero. Which hero put him there? I don't remember which hero put him there, but he couldn't leave the Hellfire Club basement in New York City and was a member of the Hellfire Club. So okay. there is a connection through his son. Because his, his progeny is a member. Okay. That's a yeah. connect. That's a pretty strong connection. It is. Uh, I'm glad that that came to mind. It helps that okay. I am reading a book where that is an important plot play in the book, but 
Well, uh, the only thing that's left is my non sequitur recommendation. So there are a ton of portrayals of the devil or of Mephisto even in media. Uh, so instead of doing one of those, uh, Stephen gave me an idea, and it is one that I'm going to recommend. Uh, Peter Fonda played Mephisto in the movie ghost rider which is not part of the mcu but it is part of marvel's greater canon uh so instead of that movie there's another movie that has peter fonda in it and that movie is called cannonball run this is a 1980s uh action comedy movie it, it stars burt reynolds and it stars a ton of other 1980s stars that are it, it has dom de it has jackie chan in this movie uh it also has Roger Moore. Uh this movie is a stacked cast of fun uh 1980s action people and it also has Farrah Fawcett as one of the uh as the uh love interest. Uh the movie is a it takes place in a race across the country and all the the uh, the action and comedy that ensues in that race across the country. And I literally mean across the country. They start in Connecticut and they go to California. So it is uh, it, it is a long drive and it is a fun movie. And I have not watched it for like since uh, 15 years ago, I think, was when I watched it. So I don't really remember all that much, but I want to rewatch it. So that's what I'm going to do in the near future. That is Cannonball Run. All right, Brad. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks to Steven for being on most of this call. And thank you everyone out there who is listening to my voice for doing just that. It hey, has been hey, a... Brad. Yeah? Do you remember the name of the movie where they're all stuck in the elevator and the devil's there? I believe it is just called Devil. Okay. The M. Night Shyamalan movie. Is that an M. Night movie? Well, it's it's produced by M Night Shyamalan, oh, I think. Okay. Still, I, I, I did, did not. not know I, I'll be honest. I did not care for that movie. <laughs> I did uh, not think it was very good. I did not see all of it. I just that movie came to mind, and I and I had to ask. Anyway, go ahead and finish your outro. Well, my my uh, memory of that movie is there's a there's a guard who drops a peanut butter sandwich and it lands peanut butter down and he screams and runs out of the room. And that was just so too. stupid and silly. <laughs> no, that's, that's so relatable. <laughs> All right, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.